Hello everyone, and welcome back to Rabbit Snippets. Have you ever been disappointed to find out that Revit cannot associate elements to rooms if these are from different models? If so, you'll be glad to know that we have developed a Revit plugin called RV Room Link to solve this exact problem. To demonstrate, I have opened here two Revit files. The first one on the left here has everything in the same model. If I go to 3D now, it's a familiar Revit sample project. Because in here, all the equipment, furniture, and rooms are in the same file, when I go to make a schedule, it's super easy to include the room name and number and other properties in the same schedule as with the elements. It's a different story though for this other file on the right. If I go to 3D now and zoom a bit in, you can see that in here, the building and its rooms are referenced in from this external Revit link file. If I hide this for a moment, we have here our equipment and furniture. But if I go and make the same schedule as the one there, in this model, room information will not come across because they are locked in that Revit link. Well, this is when RV Room Link comes in handy. To try this app for free, simply follow the link in the video description to access your free trial. Once you've got it installed, just go to the Add-ins tab. Under RV Boost, you can run RV Room Link. When it's open, simply follow the three simple steps to sort out the missing room data. For step one, simply select all the links that contain rooms that have the required data. Keep in mind that in here, you will only see links that have been loaded into the model. So for example, if I close this down for a moment and unload this link over here for FFNE elements, where that's unloaded, if I run RV room link one more time, that link is no longer there in my list. All right, let's try to select this architecture file here. That's where my rooms are. As soon as you have selected at least one link from this list, these two dropdowns will show the available phases and room parameters from those files. So if I go to phase, I can now select from which phase in that link that I want to get room information from. Let's go for working drawings because that's the phase where I created my rooms. Next step for the room parameter, I can now click here and select one of the available room parameters from this list. This includes not only default parameters, but all the custom and shared ones that you have added to that Revit file. For now, let's select room name. You are now free to include additional links, so if your rooms are saved in different files, they can all come together here, because you can then select all of them from this list. So if I now click on General Arrangement, and go back to room parameter, you will see the list is kind of the same. But keep in mind, these are the common parameters that rooms in those links have. So if I now untick the first one with only the second one selected, when I go to here now, you can see I have other parameters specific to that link, such as ADB code and ADB description. When I go back here, select the first link again, back to room parameters, they are now gone because only common parameters of rooms in those links will be displayed. It's slightly different for phases. If I go back to phase, because now I have two different links selected, I have now more than three phases as I saw before, because some of them are now coming from this second link. This is by design, so you can select as many rooms as possible from your links, but can still be sure that you are pulling data from a common parameter that they all have. For now, let's stick with working drawings. Second step is to select which elements in this current Revit model that should receive room data from your links. There are two ways to do this. Let me show you. If I go back to 3D now and select a few items here, for example, when I go back to RV Room Link, I can select this button to include only the elements that I have selected. In this case, only those highlighted in red will have their parameters populated. The second way to select elements is by categories. If I now click on this second button, it now allows me to choose which categories the add-in should get all elements from. For example, if I want to get only generic models, I can tick this box here and then go up to this option bar, go to element parameter and then select the parameter that room information should be copies to. For example, I can go for comments or mark or the shared parameter that I added from before, such as room name or room underscore number. Let's go for room name. Moving on, you can continue to select additional categories. For example, if I go for electrical equipment now, when I go back to this parameter list, I can see room name still there because that's a common parameter that both categories have. If I go here and select all categories available, 
under the parameter list, I have fewer parameters now because other things like offsets or base level are not common for all of them. One more thing to notice is this list seems to be short. That's because it only shows categories being used in your Revit file. If I go back to my model now and draw a few walls, maybe like that. I can even put in a new floor for demonstration purposes. With that done, when I go back to RV room link now, you can see the list is now extended to have floors and walls, should you want to choose them. So that's the second step done. We can now go to the final step, step number three, setting some data syncing options. Firstly, you need to decide if you want to override existing parameter values or not. That means if some elements from those categories already have parameter values for this parameter here, RV room link will respect that and keep those values for you. It will only write values to empty parameters if you tick this box here to say that you want to do that. The next thing to specify is the face of the required elements. You can do so from this drop down. Here you need to select a face where the required elements have been created on. In my case, that's new construction. This is a much requested feature because some of our users actually want to combine elements and rooms coming from different phases. That's why you have here two drop downs, one for setting the room face and the other for setting elements face. Also a requested feature is the option to include elements created before the selected phase. So if I tick this box here, RV room link will also include elements created before new construction. In this case, if something is made on existing, that will also be included in the room check. There are other more advanced options under this, but we'll come back to those in a minute. For now, let's make sure we can see the parameter to receive room information in this schedule. I will quickly go to here now and include room name and maybe remove this one. It's no longer in use. So as you can see now, it's all empty for this parameter. If I go back to RV room link, it has remembered all the settings we've done from before. So now we only have to click on sync. That is now done. When I scroll down, I can see now much of this has been populated with the right values. RV room link actually has successfully detected more rooms than Revit could have done by default. These two files, they are identical. The only difference is we have put in here rooms and architectural elements in the link. So when I go into this schedule over there, this is what Revit has done by default in terms of room detection. When I go to what RV browser has produced, you can see now that the list here actually has more values for room names. This is because our room check is much more advanced than what Revit typically does. With Revit, an element has to be completely inside a room to be linked to that room. With RV browser, if I go back to the user interface for a minute, you can see now it has this option where you can choose a tolerance for room detection. This value is in millimeters and for example here I have set it to 100. That means an element during room detection will look around its surrounding space within a 100 millimeters tolerance to see if it can find any room in that zone. So if you have something sitting just slightly outside a room but the distance is less than 100 mil, that room and that element will still be linked up. The second technique that RV room link is using to get as many rooms as possible is this using guest points. So for elements without room calculation points defined in their families, RV room link will construct these points for you on the fly and use those for room detection for best results. Let me show you what that means. If I go back to 3D now and maybe select this table here. For default room detection to work well, you usually have to do this. You have to go and edit a family and then under properties, make sure the room calculation point object is enabled. It's a green point there. The problem is, if you haven't got this done in the family before you use it in the project, you may find yourself having to do this for hundreds, if not thousands of Revit families. And that takes a lot of time. With RV room link, you can forget about this. Simply go back to your project now. And in the user interface of the plugin, you can tick this box here to have those points created for you 
so that when you scan the models, as many rooms will be detected as possible. The same will be done for doors and windows. So for example, if I go to this model here and edit this window, you can see just like with the table, it has this option here for room calculation point. When I enable this, you have this from room point and this to room point. The from room point is supposed to detect which room this element opens from. And likewise, the to room point should be where this element opens to. Doing this for many hundreds or thousands of windows and doors can take a very long time. That's why when I go to here now and open back RV room link, it has provided from that same tick box a way to construct these points on the fly for you, just like with the table for best room detection result. The only difference when it comes to doors and windows is this. Instead of one room point, it has two, the two room point and the from room point. So, when RV Room Link is processing a window or door and it has found a room on either side, it wants to know which room you want to be reported in the parameter selected here. That's why the option down below let you choose if you want to read the from room point or the to room point. If I tick to room, then the number or name of the room here will be reported. If I instead go back to here now and select the from room point, the properties of this from room over here will be used instead. Everything is under your control in that regard. Finally, the final option in this list is a value to use where you have no room detected. This is usually because these elements are outside of any rooms in the model. For example, this one here, if I want to show it in the file now. And if I just quickly turn on back the architecture file, you can see straight away this object is actually outside of the building. That's why even with the best room check methods, it's still important that you model your elements in the right place so that I can get a room associated to them. Anyway, for things that are obviously outside or shouldn't have any room under their properties, we can still note them like that quickly using RV room link. Just go back to here now and type in here a value you want to use whenever there's no room detected. In my case, I can use external. And now when I run this check one more time, you will see external and up there. Of course, you can do this as many times as you want. Maybe we can go back to this file here and try to run it here as well. To compare the result with what Revit does on default, I can now go back to here and include maybe another field such as comments. On this other file, I can now run the same plugin, RV room link. And this time, because I have rooms in this model, I can now just select this model from this list. That's the active live file you have opened. Next step, I can tick on everything here. Make sure I get the face of the rooms right. And this time, let's get room number. The parameter to get values will be comments and the face of elements will be working drawings again. Let's run this. And you can see straight away, we have now room numbers as well. Just like before, thanks to our advanced room detection techniques, we actually have more rooms detected using the plugin than what Revit can do on its own. If you like this process and want to try RV Room Link for free, simply follow the link in this video description to get access to a completely free and fully featured trial. Thanks for watching and enjoy using RV Room Link.